it was all fake. Real scientists combed through the data and forced the journal to retract it. Three countries uh, prohibited the use of HCQ for COVID based on this Lancet study, Belgium, France, and Italy. Dr. Fauci himself basically the, declared the drug a lost cause. Clearly, the, the scientific data is, is really quite evident now about the lack of efficacy for it and even the possibility that there could be adverse events, particularly with regard to cardiovascular and the arrhythmias that may be associated with it. And yet a deafening silence from Dr. Fauci today. The silence speaking volumes. There's a lesson here. Science is a process. It's not an outcome. And when politics and confirmation bias take precedence, well, there is a bad <coughs> result coming. Joining me now is Dr. Ramin Osqui, cardiologist and CEO of Foxhall Cardiology. Also with me is Dr. Stephen Smith, founder of the Smith Center for Infectious Diseases and Urban Health. Dr. Smith, you've treated so many COVID patients and continue to. You say this is a blight on the medical community and one that brings you no joy. Explain. Yeah, Laura, thank you. Uh, how are you tonight? Good. Um, uh, uh, it's a rough time. It's a rough time, obviously, in America, but it's a, a rough time in uh, medical journalism, uh, academic medicine. Uh, the mixture of politics and medicine really don't have any role. I mean, it's never mixed together. The sad day, I mean, I knew um, I'd been through the Lancet article, and I, I just critiqued it, assuming the data were correct. I didn't think they were valid, but I assumed that. I, I sent in my critique to Lancet. To their credit, they asked me to submit it as a correspondence so that they may publish part or all of it. And it was highly critical of just the analyses of the data. And then a couple of days later, you know, the piece is in, in the fan. And... Um, the data were shown to be fraudulent, or called out to be fraudulent, and later proved to be fraudulent. Um, and then the journal had published an article, on, not related to hydroxychloroquine, but related to COVID, uh, on a lesser data set from the same group uh, several weeks earlier. And they re have both have had to retract their paper. And this my question to you, my, my question to you, uh, Dr. Osquey, and I'm gonna get back to Dr. Smith, have people perhaps died because doctors were less willing to give hydroxy in an outpatient basis. We won't know well, that, I guess, right? I, I think we may never know that. But this is medical fraud for political purpose. Uh, what what uh, these individuals did, and the Lancet and New Control Medicine were party to, as was Dr. Fauci was, they spiked the use of hydroxychloroquine. Physicians are notoriously risk adverse. What, you stay away from controversy. Uh, and this is this has now become vastly more controversial than it should have been. You don't hear about positive studies in, that are beautifully done in France, in Spain, in Italy, in South Korea that answer a lot of these questions. You have these these poorly done studies, if they are done at all. In the case of the Lancet article, it's clearly just a completely fraudulent database, and you have. Dr. Horton and Dr. Rubin, the editors of the Lancet New Journal, respectively, who are pulling a Rob Rosenstein saying, I didn't know, I never read it, but they published it yeah. with Verve, and they should consider resigning from their positions. We need to have a wholesale look, because what you wonder what else is wrong in these journals. If this is if this is what yeah. we've discovered in this simple Do matter. Dr. Smith, uh, the, the, the problem here, I think, is that the media, like, we're, we're just lay people. You guys are sophisticated medical thinkers. We're lay people. But w people hear this like, oh, my God, I'll never take this. I'm going to have a heart attack for the first pill I take. So people were afraid, Dr. Smith. And you were coming on this show week after week. I mean, you must have come on the show 15 times. And you, you explained very methodically when you prescribe it, how you prescribe it, the patient types you're having. And... I, I just fear real damage was done, not only to medical no, establishment, to people. I, I agree. I think people have died because of this, and I'm not, I don't feel that lightly at all. I myself have continued to prescribe it, but I do so extremely carefully because I know the administration's looking over my shoulder. I know it. And they've restricted the drug now to clinical trials, on, which doesn't, it's unethical, but that's what they've done. And it's a very, very chilling environment to practice medicine in. And it's weird that where science doesn't rule the day, where 
this height that uh, we know hydroxychloroquine is safe. The studies are unbelievably uh, strong in that regard. And people have suggested, well, they weren't on COVID patients. Come on. We have our own data showing it's safe. We still measure EKGs on patients every day when we use this regimen. We do that not because we think we need it, because yeah. if, God forbid, anything happened to this patient, they're going to blame us. Oh, of course they are. Yeah, Dr. Osprey, my, my question here is where are the mea culpas from Dr. Fauci, from all these medical journalists, from all of these media types who gleefully proclaimed this drug is dead. It's not going to be the go-to drug. It's out of hospital protocols. I've not heard from any of them. Zero. Well, that, that one abiding characteristic of all politicians is they can never admit they're wrong. And this tells me that Dr. Fauci and others uh, who never admit they make a mistake are more politician than physician. You'll never see this. They'll move on. They'll never be yeah. caught out for what they've done and, and, and the real damage they've done to the trust that, that practicing physicians like myself have for these so-called academic yeah. experts. We got to go. All right, gentlemen, thank you both for being here.